So we're going over Tmux today. Uh, Tmux is basically, it's a tool that you use in the terminal for workflow, which is really good for cybersecurity professionals. Um, and no, you're not gonna hear me say, please like and subscribe in this video. That's up to you, I don't care. I'm not gonna ask in every fucking video. Uh, and you're probably thinking to yourself, why are we doing Tmux, Red? That's terminal multiplexer. See, I use smart words. Uh, you know, if we're in the terminal, then we need to know Linux and stuff like that. You're right, you do. Am I gonna sit here and teach you everything about Linux? No, no, I will not. Do I feel bad that there's a shit ton of Linux resources out there that you can go learn from? No, no, I do not. I even wrote an article on reviewing Linux for hackers on the blog. So you can go read that if you want to go buy the book, read it. It's amazing. Um, so today what we're talking about is Tmux and it will really help you in the terminal. Okay. Um, I like it. I really enjoy it. Really good things about it. There's some setbacks about it. Um, but why do we use it? Well, one of the big things is basically just workflow, especially with remote environments. So, you know, as you get new into cyber, as you start in cybersecurity and you start moving through that world, you realize that um, a lot of professionals, a lot of people, uh, you know, they actually don't use local machines to do their security research and security testing. Um, you know, they have a local operating system on their local computer, but they use like virtual private servers. And so you're actually logging into a server, let's say a Linux server, that hosts a Linux security-based uh, security research operating system like Kali or Parrot OS, or even Ubuntu with like a ton of different you know security tools installed, and uh, you don't have a, a GUI, you know, you don't have a graphical user interface. You've got just the terminal, um, and that's kind of important because when you only have the terminal and you don't have a GUI, you can't exactly scroll up to see the results of say an nmap scan. So that's one of the reasons why we're gonna talk about Tmux and workflows and just kind of go through how Tmux works. So really simple, starting out, the way, the, enter, in the, the way that you enter into Tmux, I'm already fucking it up and I don't care because we've already started the video, is Tmux. Look at that. Now I've got what? bash down there at the bottom and I'm just going to move this a little bit because I am working on a GUI. There we go. I've got bash down there at the bottom because I'm in a bash shell and then I'm in Tmux and if I want to exit Tmux, I just exit. Great. Look, Tmux exited. Not bad. I can name the session and the way I do that is Tmux new, whoops, dash S and then the session name. Okay. Why would I do this? Well, maybe I have multiple Tmux workflows going at the same time. So I could be working on, say, you know, a box or a website target like coderedblog.io. And then I could also be working on a, another target that is like a internal, external pen test or security audit, risk assessment, whatever. So Tmux new dash S and then the session name. Let's just say this is going to be coderedblog. Dot io and look at that we've got code red block yeah i got cut off but you can see code red blog down there yes um so we can actually detach from this session but leave it still running in the background and that uses the prefix the prefix i almost said prefix so <laughs> tmux um has what's known as a prefix so you enter in the prefix to go into command mode instead of just you know typing out whatever you want to type out. And then once you go into command mode, you can give it certain commands. Now the set prefix for Tmux is control B. Uh, I know you can change it in the configuration files. I haven't done that, but yeah, you can do that if you want to. So if I do control B and then D, it detaches from the session, but the session is still running. And that's important because I can actually detach and go back and forth between sessions. Okay. So if I want to reattach to that session, I could do Tmux attach dash T and then the session name, which is code red blog.io.
Oh, <laughs> code red blog. They uh, T Mux change it to underscore IO is what it looks like. Okay. See right there. I'm right back in there. Okay. And then I want to detach from it. Control B. And let's say I've got some automated tools, right? So let's say I'm doing an nmap scan and you know, maybe I'm using a mass, a tool like a mass to do a uh, subdomain or go buster to do subdomain enumeration. Um, if you don't know what any of that is, that's okay. Go look it up. Um, but I can start a different session of Tmux and work on it while I've got that other stuff going on in the background. So I'm just going to start a new session. Tmux. Need to remember the command. New dash S and then the new session name. So let's say the other project I'm working on is a internal pen test for, um, oh, I don't know, a company called um, uh, USD. Right there. Now I'm in USD. And I can hit control B and detach, leaving this running in the background. And I can do Tmux attach dash T and then the other session name code red blog underscore IO. What? Oh, because I don't know how to spell. There we go. You can see the bottom in green code red blood because it's cut off. So, uh, and then I can hit control B D and now I've got two Tmux sessions that are both running in the background, right? And I can also look at what Tmux sessions are being used, which is Tmux LS. Look, I've got USD using one window and code red blog underscore IO using another window. Nice. Okay, so um, let's go into USD and we're going to show you creating new windows because that's what's important. Attach dash T and then the session name USD. Okay, so we're in here. Now you can see at the bottom it says zero bash. And why is that? Well, because it's the first window. And remember with computers, like the numbers, the, when you count, they start at zero. They don't start at one. Did I know that when I started learning cybersecurity? Nope. Figured it out the hard way. So um, if we want to create a new window in this Tmux session, we're going to do control B and then C. And that creates a new window. So now you can see there's zero and one. And they both say bash because they're both using the bash shell, right? Um, if I was running a command, like if I was doing an nmap scan, I think at the bottom it would actually say nmap instead of bash. You know, like what what is it actually using? So um, <clears throat> we can also um, look at the windows in this Tmux session by hitting control B and W. And right there, oh wow, look at that, we have all the sessions actually. So we've got the two windows in our USD session and the one window in our code red blog session. That's pretty cool. Um, if you hit enter on any of these, it doesn't do anything. It just takes you back to the session that you were in, uh, by the way. So yeah, um, it doesn't let you choose, it just lists the windows and you can see what's running on the windows, okay? Um, so here's a great example. So let's actually, so I'm going to hop back into the code red blog session. Uh, hold on. Control B D detached. And I'm going to jump into code, oops, code red blog underscore IO. And I'm going to run top. And if you don't know what top is, um, top is kind of like task manager in Windows. So it lets you see the different processes that are running, right? And uh, the programs and PID, that's the process ID, the user that's running it, root or red, which is me, um, PR, that's the priority number. A lot of this stuff has to do with like Linux system administration. Uh, but <clears throat> this is really important because like you can see the percent CPU and percent memory. So I may have this pulled up so I can actually just sit here and watch and be able to keep an eye on like, like if I'm running Nmap and GoBuster and I mean, let's say another one like Ferox Buster, just any tools that I'm using, I can actually see 
what's taking up the most memory and I can change the priority listing so that I conserve my resources and use them as best I can. All right, so we're gonna leave that up. We're gonna hit Control B for the prefix and then D. Now we've popped out and now we're gonna do tmux attach dash T and go into the USD session that we created. Uh, and then, so we're in window one and we can do, um, let's see here, control B and then the window number. So if I hit control B and then zero, see how the little star moved? Now I'm in the zero window. So I can run an MMAP scan here um, and we're just gonna do it on, I gotta learn how to spell, man, jeez. On our own domain and that's running and I can go control B1 and that takes me back into this, this window. Um, and let's go into, I created one, so there's documents, LS, Tmux, yeah. I know you guys can see my directories, it's just me fussing about. Um, and I'm gonna nano uh, notes notes2.txt because we already have a notes in there. And right here I can just take notes, right? Like uh, started nmap recon on uh, code red blog. Jeez. Um, you know, did a uh, manual look through website, found, found no vulnerabilities so far. You know, I can just make notes, right? And while I'm in here in nano, I can hit control B zero and go back to the end map scan. Um, so yeah. Uh, Oh, look at that. They're all in ignored states. So interesting. <clears throat> um, must mean somebody has good security or subpar. Okay, now the great thing is right here. So like I said earlier, we can see the list of windows, right? So control B and then W. And right here we can see there's, there's the Tmux window in USD, there's the nano window in USD, and there's top, right? So we can actually get a snapshot of these different windows and what's going on with them. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, now we can also split the windows, okay? And we can split them vertically or horizontally, right? So me personally, I wanna split them vertically. So how do I do that? I hit Control B and the percent sign. Boop. Or I can do, if I would choose to split them horizontally, it'd be control B and then the quote sign. Yeah, control B and then quote. So that splits windows um, horizontally with control B quote, and then vertically is control B with a percent sign. Now, this is great because now I can flip back and forth. I can do control B and hit the arrow to the left, which takes me to this one on the left and I can make notes. Um, looks like Nmap didn't find anything. And then I can do control B and hit the right arrow and it puts me right back into this other window. Uh, so that's how, yeah, so why is that really important? Well, <clears throat> um, you know, let's say we're doing an Nmap scan on one side or we're even using Netcat as a listener. Let's say we're trying to do a reverse shell payload or we're in Metasploit. Like we can monitor things on one side while we're entering things or maybe submitting a payload or something on the other side. So um, that's one of the great things about Tmux is it really, it just helps with workflow, okay? Now, like I said, Tmux is supposed to be used in you know a terminal where we really don't have a GUI uh, I mean, you can use it even when you have a GUI. I do. I like it with my workflow. But here's something to know. Let's say you have an Nmap scan. Let's say you want to see the results of the Nmap scan. You can scroll up. In Tmux, you can't scroll up. That's a drawback. So um, really important here, and this is something that should be done anyways, programs like Nmap, Amass, any security testing tools, GoBuster, if there's a way to save the output, to a file, do it. Always do it, okay? So that it's always saved. I have run an Nmap scan and accidentally hit the X button 
and lost the results of my Nmap scan and had to redo it, all right? So, and the reason being is because with Tmux especially, like if you save the output to a file, then you can just go into that file in your Tmux terminal and peruse through everything using Nano or Vim or whatever text editor you choose to use, okay? Um, LeafPad, uh, if, you don't, if you don't know a lot about text editors, look into that as well. Um, yeah, so, and basically easiest thing with Tmux is just exit. So if you want to end Tmux, just hit exit. Uh, we're not going to save that buffer. Exit, exit. Now we're back in here, but we need to go into the Tmux session that we had with Code Red blog. Code Red blog. I, God, fuck Red. I got to learn how to spell underscore IO. Boom. There's top, control C, ends top, exit, and there we go. Now all of our TMX sessions are done, all right? Um, so it's really that simple. TMUX is really powerful, it's versatile. Um, you know, it's something that you should definitely get to know when it comes to workflows. Um, there's another uh, kind of similar version of it that I came across called Midnight Commander. Uh, so that's something that you can look up, but I like Tmux just because it, it really allows us to see multiple things at the same time, especially when we're doing security testing or scans or anything like that. So yeah, I hope this helped. If it didn't help, that sucks. <laughs>